just do something to tell you who I am, you know? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this still unnamed Superman show that I'm trying to do here and trying to figure out. Um, much like my Halo show, from time to time, I like to do these episodes where I talk about some kind of real-world situation and kind of how it pertains to us, but also, you know, look through it at, through the lens of Superman because I think Superman, kind of like Master Chief, you know, Master Chief, uh, he's kind of looked to in his universe as someone who might have answers, someone who is a leader, someone who can guide you um, through a battle, much like Optimus Prime. I think there's a lot of similarities between Master Chief and Optimus Prime, actually. Uh, but Superman, though, is for us, I think, kind of what we hope to be like. You know, we would all like to be like Superman on some level. I think some people see him as kind of a goody two-shoes and a Boy Scout, and they don't like that about him. Um, you know, I think the people who are have seen more of the real world and how ugly it can be, they kind of don't look at a character like Superman as someone who actually represents the best of us um, or anything they'd like to be like. But for, I think for most people, in a fictional way, you know, we, we know he's a fictional character. We know there's no one really on earth like Superman, obviously. But, uh, but I think a lot of us who like him in fiction see that the, the fact that he sticks to these maybe old school morals in some way that makes him very unique and different because the world has gotten more cynical, has always been violent on, on a lot of levels. Um, so I wouldn't say we're more violent. Maybe there's more people and that's why it's perceived to be more violent. But in my day to day life, I, I see that most people try to do their best. Right. And I think that's what someone like Superman is. And I think that's how he could probably represent and be more, you know, the modern world and be more relatable as if you just approach him as someone who's trying their best. We all have potential in us, I think, to do great things, to do very selfless things, um, to do very honorable things. But on some level, that's also not very realistic because some days we have to do something, you know, maybe that's morally gray to get by. You know, like we're like, hey, you look, I'm just trying to make it through the day. I'm trying to pay my bills. I'm trying to support myself or my family or a friend or a loved one. I'm trying to help uh, where I can, but I'm also like, you know, no one's perfect. And so, um, so some of, sometimes we don't even try to be because we know how hard it is to actually achieve it. So I think some people think Superman is just perfect. And I don't like to look at Superman that way. Uh, for me, you know, I'd like to see him as a guy who's just trying his best with what he has. He just happens to have a lot of things that cynical people or evil people would see as benefits, you know, these powers that he has, all these uh, great things that he can do. I think people just, when they see him and they see just his powers, I think that's, uh, you know, you know, it's reducing him to one thing. And Superman, as most people who know who read the comics, he's a lot more than just his powers. So I just watched um, Injustice, the animated movie, which is based on the video game and the comic book series that followed the video game. Uh, by DC and um, uh, Other Realm, who made the video game, they make Mortal Kombat, and they made these two great games, Injustice and Injustice Two, where it's a fighting game like Mortal Kombat style, but it's the DC superheroes, and they're a lot more violent than we're used to. Um, they have finishing moves, but not fatalities so much. They're not like ripping each other's heads off and stuff, but they're doing some pretty intense things. <laughs> and the way they explain it is that in the video games, at least. Um, there's like a pill that some of the heroes like Batman and other people that don't have powers can take. So that way if Superman punches them, they don't like explode <laughs> or something, something along those lines. Um, so there's like a drug out there that they're passing around to give them a fighting edge against someone like Superman. Um, they're still not as strong as him, but at least they could take a punch <laughs> for the most part. And then I think they're trying to use magic to weaken him. So the story in the video game is a little different than the, the movie, but one thing the movie touches on that is very important to the, um, to the comic book and to the video game is this idea of a Superman that kills. And that's going to be the focus of this conversation is what, what does it take to get Superman to kill? Um, you know, humans, we try, right? We, we really don't, I think in our hearts want to hurt each other. We do get angry. I think uh, for me, at least my perception of the world right now, and you may disagree, but my perception of the world right now is that there is a lot of people killing each other and dying. And a lot of it 
feels like it's media driven. It's uh, it's the news getting people angry, getting people riled up, getting people to scream at something. Uh, because the way I see it is when people are angry, they're blind. And that pertains to this story with Superman. Now, you can be angry over something justified, like what happens to Superman in this. Um, you know, I watched the animated film just now. I've played the game. I read the comic. And the one thing that they all have in common is is the thing that makes Superman uh, get angry. Um, I would hardly say Superman's a villain. Really, you could argue that. He certainly lead, leads in a dictator territory with the way he's going. But I think a lot of that's driven by anger. And so I want to talk about that as the reason for Superman killing in the animated movie and the game and the comic book. So this is not really a review of the movie, although I wanted to review the movie. The thing is my FedEx guy said he delivered it and never got delivered. And he actually did this three times in a row where he was delivering it somewhere where apparently it wasn't my apartment. I don't know what the full story is. There's an investigation on it going on. I don't want to believe someone's just taking my DVDs. That seems so silly that, you know, DVDs are like, you know, you can rent it for six bucks. You don't have to take a DVD. So it was just weird to me that these DVDs were just not appearing. And, uh, and funny enough that they were Superman ones. Like it was like uh, injustice, the Superman animated series, which I actually had to drive and chase down my FedEx driver to get it. <laughs> so, uh, that's, and then, and I said, dude, what are you doing? He's like, well, I was going to deliver it to your Dropbox. I'm like, dude, you said delivered when you got to, when you drove past my building and now you're leaving my apartment complex and you're saying you're going to put it in my Dropbox. Like what Dropbox you're leaving my apartment complex. So there was definitely something shady going on there for whatever reason. I don't know why, but, uh, but he just wasn't delivering my mail. Um, so that sucked. So I had, now I have to get all my review copies sent to my work because uh, because apparently I can't trust my own FedEx driver or whatever. So anyway, that's another story. But it, that kind of sucked to to be to for, you know for me not to be able to review stuff for you guys um, when the movies came out because you know they were stolen or lost. I, I don't want to accuse, but it was it was very shady <laughs> for sure. Um, so in this case with the story, Superman he is infected with Scarecrow serum. So the Joker kidnaps Scarecrow, forces him to make a serum mixing with kryptonite, then kills Scarecrow, and then in the movie sets up a trap to kill Flash. Uh, right in the beginning, too, which is crazy. Um, and now Superman is infected with a fear toxin and kryptonite. Uh, so it's actually worth the fear toxin's working on him, and he's never been infected by, you know, Scarecrow fear toxin before. So the Joker reveals doomsday and superman's like okay it's doomsday i'm not gonna let doomsday destroy this city so he punches the crap out of doomsday and then takes his body into space and then as he gets into space the the drug wears off and he sees that he wasn't actually punching doomsday he was punching lois who is pregnant with his child they just found out earlier that morning and so now he has just killed lois and his unborn child because of the joker and then the Joker, there's a uh, like a scar on um, Lois's chest. And it turns out the Joker rigged a, a small device to her heart. So when it stops beating, all of Metropolis will self-destruct. So, um, And so not only does Superman kill Lois and their unborn child, but because he does that, her heart stops and it blows up the entire city of Metropolis. So everyone that Superman swore to protect is now gone. And that's, um, wow, that's, uh, the, that's, if you're going to push someone over the edge, that, that sounds like a reasonable thing to do. Because what it does, Joker's plan, even though Joker dies, Superman, you know, he, that's the first death. Joker kills, or Superman kills Joker. And that's the first death, right, in this universe. And that's the beginning. And, and Batman even says it, he goes, it, you know, you say it's just one death and it's a monster, but... It always starts with one death and it doesn't matter how justified it is this is going to get worse and batman as usual is right and the world spins out of control and sides are drawn between the heroes there are those heroes that actually believe what superman is doing is right because there's criminals out there that just keep getting locked up and they keep getting out and causing more damage like the joker and now he's done this horrible thing because batman has never dealt with him before but we know Batman has a strict moral code. He believes in the law, even though the law is twisted 
by politicians and all these horrible people that get into power and they bend the laws to to where it never can hurt them. It only hurts people under them for the most part. And whenever they do break a rule, they just find a way to change the law so that way their punishment is not as severe as it would be for regular people. And even though all that's the case, Batman still believes in the bare basics of the law and that it can be used for good and that it should be followed. And whether you agree or not with that, those are the lines Batman takes and Superman takes. Superman now is like, okay, I killed Joker, but you're right. The world is an ugly place. There's wars, you know, in different countries that are killing women and children or just, you know, dictators that are horrible to their people. Um, there's politicians that are twisting things for their benefits, um, even here in America. And I'm done with it. Superman's like, I am absolutely done with it. And Wonder Woman encourages it at first, but in the end, she, you know, uh, sees that he's gone too far, uh, at least in the animated one. So anyway, I think there's mixed feelings about the animated version. It's certainly not as good as the comic book or the video game, but I actually kind of liked it because it raised this question of w Superman that kills and why does he do it? And it's clear because he's angry. He lost everything and it, it is eating him alive. That anger is blinding him to the good person that he really is to the point to where he loses himself. And I was thinking about all these cases in the media lately where people are dying, uh, gun violence, uh, sometimes non-gun violence, uh, spousal abuse, you know, uh, all these things that happen in the world that is heartbreaking and horrible to watch. And, and like, you know, humans, like, you know, we, we try our best not to devolve into the animal, you know, an animal and just like blindly kill and, you know, let our anger take over. But it's hard. We are so consumed by media now that I think we are programmed to be angry at things all the time. To, the more we don't look at it clearly and try to rationalize it and make sense out of it, um, and I get it. There's some things out there that just don't make sense. There's some people out there you just can't get through to. They're too far gone um, one way or the other. But I think most things you can you can try to discuss and rationalize. And that may be naive and it may sound stupid to most of you. So I'd love to hear your opinions. But there are times, though, I believe that we have that we kill like we have to, you know, like if someone signs up to be a police officer or a soldier and they're in an area and a gun is aimed at them. Obviously, they're going to aim their gun first. Or if even if they're the other person, if they're the person the cop is confronting or the soldier is confronting, um, the, that person, if they have a weapon, they're going to draw it in, in order to self-preserve, right? We have this, um, you know, this, this thing in us that uh, wants to survive a lot of times. There are people that are depressed and have the opposite, um, and, you know, which is also tragic. But we have, there's those of us, most of us, have this thing in us that just want to make it to tomorrow. And so if something, something can, you know, confronts that or threatens that we, uh, we fight, you know, if, if someone breaks into our home and we have kids, we want to, you know, we will fight and kill to save our loved ones, to make sure nothing happens to them, to be there for them, to make sure nothing happens to them. And it's, it's hard because taking a life is not easy for most people. And I think, uh, like almost all people, uh, some people have something missing in them and taking a life is, is much easier. But for most of us, it's, it's impossible. And for a lot of people that have to do it in those situations, it's not easy. And it isn't for Superman at first either, but he, he grows into it because his anger increases. He starts looking for other ways to justify his pain and his anger. And that just made me think of us. Like it made me think of our world and how, there are things on the news that say like, you know, this happened and these two people died. And then you'll have another news go, well, the two people that died were, were black. And so this was a racist thing. But then you have another news source say, well, the two victims were white and it wasn't a race thing. <laughs> and, and, and one is showing pictures showing they're white and the other is saying they're black without showing pictures. This is something I saw recently. And I'm like, okay, so what is, what is like, you know, this misreporting and this misinformation coming from major news sources, um, 
these narratives that each uh, company, because think about that, like CNN, MSNBC, um, Fox, they're all owned by people, right? Rich, rich people who have money invested in politicians and businesses that politicians have interests in and, uh, you know, construction companies that rebuild the bridges and roads that politicians will hire, you know, when they get stimulus packages uh, passed and stuff. Um, so it's just money circulating between rich people. And this is an observation I'm making. This is not like, uh, hopefully I'm not blowing anyone's mind by saying this stuff. But but my point is, is that is that there's people out there that are doing evil every day to some extent uh and and we're we're blind to it but those people the reason we're blind to it is because they'll use their money and influence and connections to make sure there's narrative spinning on the media so that every time something even remotely close to that narrative happens they can adopt it into that narrative and use it to anger one side and uh and then the other side you know either be left confused or left targeted as the enemy now and it's just this way to keep people divided because the more people think uh the more rational they'll be for the most part i meet people day to day i've been doing retail and i've been working in sales and i've been doing all this stuff for years and my observation and the pattern i see is that most people are decent people you have people that have their bad days and you have their people that are just something's missing and they are border, you know, they're monsters or borderline monsters, or they have the potential to become monsters. And Superman used to want to save those people. And he doesn't in this story and in injustice, he is all for killing them, even to a point where now that the Joker's dead and the Joker caused all this, you know, this stuff to happen to Superman. He shows up at a club where everyone in there is getting Joker tattoos and they're, it's like a rave. It's a bunch of kids, misguided kids who, you know, look at Joker as some kind of hero. You know, like the way uh, there's like, a, you know, terrorists in the world that people will be like, oh, he was a freedom fighter. And I, re I love that guy, you know, because he was against fascism, whatever. So you have all these misguided kids calling Superman a fascist, um, which really he's, I mean, he's becoming a dictator and a monster really, but, but they, you know, they're throwing bottles at him and, Old Superman would have just been like, okay, they're misguided kids. Like everyone in here is probably like, tw you know, 20 and under or something. They're all at this club uh, or 21 and under maybe. Uh, and he goes, so, but he, in, but in this version, he kills them all. He absolutely kills everyone with his heat vision, just kills hundreds of kids, uh, all dressed as a Joker. And there is a, a discussion after that in the, in the movie where the, some people or some Justice League members are like, hey, they're, they're, they were dressed up as uh, Jokers. Like they're idolizing a monster and Batman's like, yeah, well, that's Gotham. <laughs> you know, he's like, it's not great, but, um, but you know, this is, we can't control them. They are free to be misguided and be stupid, uh, as kids. And we can only hope that they grow to be better adults that, that more options that open up for them, you know, to, to guide them to better places. Um, we can only hope that we inspire them to do the right thing one day, you know, but if Superman keeps going down this path, it's going to, you know, just make more people react like this and more misguided people to do this. And, uh, it just made me think, like, I don't know, I, I, I just wanted to have this conversation with some of you of killing like Superman, if he represents the best of us, and then you have a story like this where he kills, it reminded me a lot of just people who you know, we, we are the best of us, you know, we can be the best of mankind. We just sometimes get too angry and we're blinded by that anger and we kill, or we are in a situation where it's us or them and we have to. And I thought about that and comparing it to Superman after I was watching, I mean, the whole time I was watching this movie, it made me ask all these questions, which the game did and the comic did too. And it just made me, it brought all that stuff up again and made me want to have a conversation with you all, you know, a Superman that kills is is alien to a lot of us. The just the concept of him killing is so foreign to so many Superman fans because for generations we had Christopher Reeve, we had the the Fleischer cartoons, we had the comic books. Uh, you know, and I know there's been times in the comics where Superman has been forced to kill, but a lot of that's happened in recent years, like the last twenty or thirty years, not even going back that far. So. 
I think it's a product of a more cynical time. So when people say, oh, Superman's killed in the comics numerous times, like, well, alternate universe Supermans have, and that's what Injustice is. It's an alternate universe Superman. So those are great stories for discussion. Um, I think John Byrne had Superman kill Zod, um, you know, in a kryptonite room with, with his two hench people. And, uh, and that happened in continuity, but that drove Superman crazy and made him fly into outer space to exile himself for like a year or two. So for like two years, Superman or a year or whatever, Superman was not even on earth. He was just flew out into space because of the guilt he felt for taking lives, even though it was Zod and it was a Zod from another universe where he killed his entire planet. Um, it still was a life and Superman hated it. He, and it, it caused him to go into exile. So I guess all of this is just a rant and, and just a discussion about anger uh, in a way, like all this ties back to anger and how angry Superman was because of what happened to him. The Joker beat him. And then the worst part was the Joker was right about him. The Joker told Batman, dude, I just, I, I made him kill his wife and his kid in his city. Like, trust me, he ain't coming back from this. He ain't going to be the Boy Scout anymore. He's going to be a lot more fun. Uh, and of course, Joker's definition of fun, right? And Batman's like, you're wrong. I believe in him and he's not going to turn. He's not going to change. And then two seconds later, Superman busts into that room and kills Joker and proves Joker right. And uh, and to me, I it just made all these questions come up because, because he was so blinded by that anger. And again, whether it's justified or not, the path it took him down was a really, really dark one. So my my question to you is, do you find stories like this interesting because of the contrast? You know that it's not Superman. It's an alternate universe Superman and that this is an extreme situation. Um, do you, I mean, knowing that and stuff, like do you like reading stories or, or experiencing stories, whether it's through video game or comics or movies, do you like that um, to just as the contrast? Uh, because at the end of this movie, they actually open a portal to another dimension and a an actual Superman that like, you know, has the red underwear on the outside of his pants and stuff like classic Superman. He shows up to fight this Superman. He still loses, um, but he shows up to try to get through to him. And in the end, it's it's like a Lois, a variant alternate universe Lois that is pregnant that shows up and says, you know, my Superman, he he, uh, you know, he dealt with Joker in a different way. And he ended up dying a couple years later or like a couple months later. By the hands of Brainiac, but he did it to save the world. So now I'm going to live without him, and our baby's going to grow up not knowing their dad. And it was a great contrast. It was a to me, I thought that was a great way to stop this Superman because really the way to beat him was to get rid of his anger. That is so hard for some of us to do. I see people online, you know, people who make YouTube videos on other YouTubers you know, trashing them and talking about how bad they are and how awful of a person they are and, you know, whatever, whatever their opinions are of, of each other. And I see all this and I find it interesting that it all comes from anger. They're mad because that YouTuber has something that they would have wanted, but that YouTuber squandered it. Or they, uh, they see someone on YouTube that does something stupid and doesn't really get punished for it. So they're mad. So they come out and, you know, speak out against them. And again, Anger can be justified, absolutely. But I think sometimes when you let it get the better of you, it takes you down a very dark path. And I want to know if you all agree with that or not. I mean, that's an observation of mine, but it, I guess you could also call it a very strong opinion. Um, and maybe it's an observation based on not a lot of information. And that's why my opinion maybe is something you don't agree with. But what do you think? I think at the end of the day, the longer we're kept angry the more we act like Injustice Superman. Um, and and we need to get rid of that anger somehow. And sometimes it's impossible. Like you think, how am I ever going to not be mad about this? You know, someone took a loved one from me or someone did something terrible to to me or someone I know. Like, you know, I understand my father was a police officer who used to routinely beat me and my mother and my brother. Um, he was a very, very bad person. Now, I don't have a ton or any really of those memories. I have the knowledge of it. It's hard to explain this to people when I tell them about my aneurysm and, and about 
the difference between memories and knowledge. Um, I can have knowledge of things, but I don't always have the emotional tetherment that, uh, that connects to a memory, right? So, um, and plus also the lack of visual memory makes that difficult as well. But it's clear that through my 20s, I was still dealing with anger towards my father. And I think it caused me to do, to be blind to a lot of things and blind to people I probably hurt emotionally. Um, I try never ever to raise my hand at anybody. I only, my mom always taught me never start a fight, but always, but don't walk away from one either. So basically if someone hits me first, she's like cut loose, you know, uh, obviously restrain yourself. Don't like beat them to death. But you know, she says if, if, if they start with you, you can end it or you can walk away because I won't be mad at you either way. You can fight them back whether you win or lose. Um, but just, you know, know when to stop the fight. Basically don't let your anger get the best of you. And, um, but don't go around bullying people. Don't go around hurting people first, you know, um, you know, only react to the, the pain if it comes and choose to react, you know, however you choose, you know, you, you could be a man about it and try to walk away. Um, or you can be another kind of man about it and, and deal with it right then and there. But uh, I guess we all have our definitions of what being a man is and stuff. Uh, but that aside, I guess I don't know what I would have done in Superman's shoes. Obviously, it's fictional. But to lose your wife and loved one in that moment at the, you know, because of someone else's actions, I can imagine, I can't actually imagine how impossible that must be to forgive or move on from that anger. I can't imagine it's even possible. So what do we do? Do we hold on to the anger and let it turn us into something that that um, we don't want to be? Um, or uh, do we let go of it and, and try to, I don't know, I don't know, be better? I mean, does that even make sense? Like, can we be better than anger? It's a human emotion and we, we should have it at times, but well, having it too long, I think is a bad thing. So I'll kind of end the episode here. This has kind of gone long on, <laughs> gone long enough, but I just, I don't know. I just wanted to rant for a while and, and, and discuss this, this topic of how anger, can, how anger blinds us, or at least how that's my opinion on it. Anger blinds us completely. And the angrier we are, the less we'll get along, the less we'll talk things out, the less we'll, you know, try to hurt each other. And I also wanted to real quick mention this other thing where, you know, we had this thing in the news recently, and I don't want to get too into this. I don't want to get too political, but um, where there was a kid who was on trial, Rittenhouse, I think is his name. Um, he was on trial for, for shooting three people, two of which died. Um, there was a protest going on during the Black Lives Matter event. And uh, these three, some people I saw some of the footage like I'm 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 not an expert on this case I ha I only know about it from a couple days ago so I don't know too much about it um but what it seemed like on the footage at least that I saw that they showed in court was the guy uh the Rittenhouse kid being attacked and then him you know defending himself with a gun and I don't want to get into all the specifics because I'm sure everyone has different opinions on that but my point of bringing this up is uh it made me think about um a line from Batman begins where the cops at the end, uh, Gordon says to Batman, like, okay, look, we're, we normally deal with normal criminals. Now we have you as Batman. So obviously there's going to be escalation. And then now the Joker has appeared. And so he's a, a product of, of you appearing. And I started thinking about that with people who go to protest. There are people that go to protest um, with their voices. And then there are people that go and they arm themselves and I wondered, well, does that invite conflict? You know, you're, you're escalating it, right? You're, you're not going with your voice. You're going with something more than your voice, something that could take a life. Um, and again, I'm not trying to argue whether the kid should have been there with a gun or not. I'm just, all I'm just talking about oh, in general is the, the idea that if there is a gun visible, some people that trigger, some people that escalates the situation when they see it, it's, it's saying like, I have more power than you and people don't like to feel powerless. So they'll, 
they'll react to that. And whether it's a cop showing up or a soldier, um, in another, if you're in another country and he, like an American soldier is coming into your country and you see his gun, you might feel that escalation feeling, you know, no matter what it is, you'll, you'll feel it. I think uh, there are people out there that do, and then they react. And, uh, and so I wondered what's that like for Superman? Superman is a, a God almost. So when he shows up, that's why it's so important to him, right? To smile, to, to make every, make every, uh, thing calm and reassuring he doesn't show up with a grimace look on his face to fight and punch people. He's there to calm you the best he can because I imagine he understands that some people react to him in that kind of way. Like, oh my God, okay, he's here. You know, that's that it's a threat because they just see the power, right? They just see the power in his hands or in his, you know, himself that, you know, in his body, like he is power, Superman. He can be if you look at him that way. Um, and, and to me, I think that's uh, something I, I would have liked to seen more of in Injustice um, is, is that kind of approach to Superman. And maybe there's some comics out there I can go look for that kind of deal with that subject. But I think some people might look at Superman as a way of, holy crap, he's escalating the situation just by being here. Just like some people might perceive someone showing up to a protest, a verbal protest with guns as a sign of, uh, you know, um, challenge. And so, I don't know, I just thought I'd throw that in here at the end because it, it was just on my mind and I wanted to, to just discuss it. Uh, but again, I don't want to get into the specifics, specifics of that case um, because I still don't really have a full opinion on it. I, I don't know enough. I'm not smart enough. And, uh, and I'm sure I try to do some research, but then I forgot, you know, and I already got enough going on in my life to, to go back and, and, and keep doing research on, on cases like that. I just, so I just wanted to keep it broad and talk about the escalation portion of it. And do you think Superman, you know, uh, deals with that? Do you think, yeah, there are people that see him and just immediately think of, okay, he's here to challenge. Uh, I know Lex Luthor thinks that way about him. Uh, so, and that, but that lets Le uh, Lex Luthor become angry and that angry, you know, that anger probably prevented or prevents Lex from being the best version of Lex, you know? Um, so yeah, just some food for thought. Anyway, Thank you so much for watching this show and uh, listening to this podcast, Superman podcast. And I'll try to do more of these uh, in the future. Uh, let me know what you think of this as a, you know, as types of topics to do on this show. And I'll try to keep them around 30 minutes and I'll, I'll try to do more of these. And uh, if you have any ideas for topics you want to see discussed in future episodes, let me know in the comments and we'll, I'll take it into consideration. Thank you so much. I will see you all up, up and away.